everybody. <laughs> this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Blessings to you and your family. Listen, I want my listeners from around the world to just stop right now. Just, just take this moment right now. Take about 10 seconds and give the Lord thanks for all of the many blessings that he has provided for you. It's crazy to think about this year and all of the moving parts to this year. COVID-19 vaccinations. Individuals who are on the fence about the vaccination or are reluctant about getting the shot. And many companies are now mandating their associates to get the vaccine. And the employees are somewhat concerned that they may lose their job if the mandated vaccine is required. The divide in America is growing by the week. I don't know about all of the other places within the world, but right now there is a great divide in America and it's growing by the week and politicians are creating more divide with their waffling from their past positions. I mean, people of God, it is getting crazy. And it's unfortunate that in today's world, we have to deal with all of this, this madness. And I can understand how confusing the information we are getting can cover our minds with fear. But I believe, I really truly believe that God wants his people to maintain, and I mean maintain their focus and to keep the Lord their biggest priority. You see, I'm reminded of this uh, passage of scripture that speaks to our focus. And this is found in the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verses 2 through 7. So if you have your Bible app or your phone or your laptop, or even if you have the old school Bible, <laughs> break it out. Now, it may read a little differently but the meaning is still the same. So Proverbs, the chap Proverbs chapter two, verses two through seven. And it reads, turn your ear toward wisdom and stretch your mind toward understanding. Call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding. Seek it like silver Search for it like hidden treasure. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and discover the knowledge of God. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He reserves ability for those with integrity. He is a shield for those who live a blameless life. People of God, to understand focus is to understand the power of turning. I want to say that one more time. To understand the significance of focus is to understand the power of turning. You see, turning your ear towards God's wisdom lets you know where your original focus should be on. You see, many times in our life, and sometimes it happens just in the, fast, in, the, in the past few days or the past few months or even all the way through this year, many times we get distracted. We get sidetracked with things that keep us angry, frustrated, upset, leading you on a slippery path towards a, a great fall. 
You see, people of God, our ears were designed to hear waves of sounds where our brains receive and process these sounds and gives clarity in our understanding of what we should be focused on. So when we when we turn our ears to the Lord, when we make a concerted effort to turn our ears to the Lord, his voice, his expression of love radiates in our hearts, causing us to reset and refocus on the one who has created a path that leads to a life full of purpose, full of freedoms from insecurities that want to pull you away from living the life the Lord created just for you. And ultimately, people of God, turning your ears to the Lord, your reverence for God grows because he has, check this out, he has eliminated the noise. <laughs> Think about all of the noise that we deal with on a day in, day out basis. Day in and day out. We deal with so much noise. And I'm not talking about from an explosion or loud music. I mean the noise of the pressures of life. The noise that deals with relational issues. The noise that the enemy wants to make you feel so full of worry and so troubled by your situation that you stand in front of. When you turn your ears to the Lord, he eliminates the noise. And the knowledge, check this out, the knowledge he will impart into you will provide for you a confidence. Somebody say confidence. God will give you a confidence and a reassurance that everything is going to be all right. So listen, if you really if you really pay close attention to the last part of this passage of scripture, there is something that resonated with me that I believe will encourage you to remain focused on what the Lord has for you. And the scripture says, he, meaning God, reserves ability for those with integrity. I want to read that verse one more time. God reserves ability for those with integrity. And he is a shield for those who live a blameless life. Now listen, people of God, what the Lord impressed upon me is the need to talk about what the Lord reserves. What the Lord reserves in is what our attention should be on. That's where our focus should be on. Because his ability... Think about God's ability to provide sound wisdom for those who walk in integrity. You see, this gives us the greatest opportunity. And I mean the greatest opportunity to experience the fullness of God. And what I mean by this is his joy, his strength, his power, his vision for your life, his knowledge of handling the tricks and the schemes of the devil, his insight for our lives that when we face present situations or when we are concerned about our future, when we understand how powerful it is, because God reserves, gives the ability for us to receive sound wisdom for the person or persons who walk in integrity. 
because the devil's tricks and schemes we have to avoid we have to block we have to allow God to become that shield for us because we are living a blameless life and the Lord the Lord's desire is to protect us from invaders and we're talking about not so much a person from space <laughs> But we know what invades our space when it comes to the troubles and the anxiousness and the worry and the fear and relationship issues that we deal with on a daily basis. When we deal with our sons and daughters, when our, when our situation looks so bleak, we have to understand who we serve because Ultimately, when you walk in integrity, the Lord will protect these invaders from occupying your heart. But unfortunately, unfortunately, people of God, there, there's a space within our hearts that is full of things that, that doesn't line up with God's truth. And so today or tonight, you are going to, you're going to have to make up your mind. I want you guys to hear this real clear now. You're going to have to make up your mind and tell yourself how long, how long will you allow these stumbling blocks, these issues, these fears, these insecurities, these job issues, these church issues, whatever the issues are, how long, people of God, how long will you allow these stumbling blocks to occupy your space? So today or tonight's episode is entitled Occupied Space. I'm going to say that one more time occupied space let's take a commercial break and we'll be right back with the episode entitled occupied space hello hello my name is christopher i'm the editor of full of life ministry san diego podcast and first of all i'd like to say thank you so much for listening we really appreciate it but i would also like to say that if you would like any prayer any words of encouragement or would just like to reach out in any way you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, you can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled Occupied Space. When a space that's overcrowded, and I want you to take a visual picture, a mental picture in your mind. When you think about a space that's overcrowded, it can become unlivable, not inviting, messy, <laughs> unorganized, and can become a safety issue. Yes, it can. You see, safety standards are in place for many companies because the occupied space is valuable and critical for success. And spiritually so, we have to examine. We have to take the time. We have to shut off the TV. We have to put up our phones and our Kindles and our iPads, and whatever device that you use. We have to make time. We have to make time and examine what's in our space and then allow the Lord to remove all of the clutter 
that easily sets us back. So now we can become everything God created us to be. I know, I know, you ask me the question, Pastor Phil, listen, what could be in our space? <laughs> Let me give you an answer of the occupied space that sometimes we allow to come into our spiritual hearts and to our minds. First John chapter 2 verses 16 and 17 it says everything that's in the world the craving for whatever the body feels <laughs> the craving for whatever the eyes see and the arrogant pride in one's possessions it's not of the father but it's of the world and the world and its cravings are passing away but the person who does the will of God remains forever hmm think about that whatever the body feels the craving for whatever the eyes see and the arrogant pride in one's possessions is what takes up some of that space within our soul it takes over, it becomes unlivable, it becomes messy, you become unorganized, and now you're not safe to really function the way God created you to be. These cravings of what the body feels, the, the cravings of what the body sees and the arrogant pride in one's possession for many individuals has occupied a place in our hearts where only God should take residence. That's the reality of our world. That's the reality of what we see in our world. That the world is passing away is because they allowed these things to occupy the space where God should be ruling and reigning within our lives. That's the reality and we see our society falling apart all around the world we see corruption and we see sin whether it's in the white house or whether it's at the store or at the schools wherever you look there's so much people allowing the cravings to occupy their space so listen people of god in order to free up your occupied space the first thing you need to do, which is number one, you need to confess to the Lord you've been a bad tenant. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. It's time for confession. And when you confess to the Lord that you've been a bad tenant, that's when he could come in and reorganize your life. Confession is good for the soul. And 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 tells us, But if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. People of God, why live? with these sins that is occupying your well-being. It's unfortunate that we have to pay psychologists, we have to pay for doctors to give medications for things that if we took it to the Lord in prayer, I believe that God could be a healer for your situation. But because we've allowed sin to rule our lives, just to impress, just to be noticed, we've become a bad tenant. We have not lived our lives in a way that we glorify God in no areas of our life. And so God wants 
that space back. But you have to confess. You have to apologize. You have to ask God for forgiveness. And as the scripture says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from everything, not just some things. He will cleanse you from everything that you've done wrong. So that's number one. Number two, in order to free up your occupied space, study God's word so you can rightly keep the clutter out. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. It's important. It's critical. In order to free up that occupied space, you have to study God's word so you can rightly keep the clutter out. Second Timothy, second chapter in the 15th verse, it says, do your best. Before I proceed, I want you to really allow those three words to resonate within your heart and in your mind. It says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. God is looking for the reliable and dependable worker that will be responsible for their space where Jesus resides. He is looking for a person who is tried and true. When you take responsibility for your space, you will never be this you will never be the same and you will never be ashamed because God will teach you truth, not what the world's truth shows. It is his truth. And the truth, his truth will make you free. So think about this, people of God. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. How can you see what's in your space if you don't have his light shining on those areas that needs removal, that needs renovation, that needs cleansing? So study God's word. God will give you the tools necessary and help you along the way so you can get your space back and then fill it with the right stuff, which is God Almighty. So that's number two. And number three, you will have to stop. You will have to stop shopping for things that clutter your space. <laughs> Do I have any hoarders out there? <laughs> Listen, St. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 says, Then Jesus said to them, or he's pretty much saying it to us. He says to them, watch out. Guard yourself against all kinds of greed. After all, one's life isn't determined by one's possessions. Even when someone is very wealthy. I want to say that verse one more time. He simply says, watch out, guard yourself against all kinds. So it's not just money, all kinds of greed. After all, one's life isn't determined by one's possessions. Even when someone is very wealthy, people of God, be aware of your surroundings when it comes to greed. You see, people of God, greed is a selfish motivation for personal gratification, fame, attention, <laughs> always hungry for more. And many times this destroys others at the expense of others. And what the Lord is saying Guard yourself 
against this disease. Don't let this occupy your space. Don't let this overcrowd your heart and your mind. Don't allow greed to rule your life. Don't allow sin to take residence within your members because God has a better plan for you. He created you to be of value. He created you to have life and life more abundantly. He created in you the opportunity to receive salvation and eternal life. And so those things that's overcrowding your space is hindering you from growing in God. So you have to stop. You have to make a concerted effort to make up in your mind that you're going to stop shopping for that stuff that's affecting your space. That's affecting your way of living. And listen, people of God, in closing, let's examine ourselves. Today, tonight, this week, examine yourselves. Because 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter in the 5th verse tells us, it says, examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Don't you understand that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you failed the test. I want my listeners from around the world to hear me and hear me clearly. Jesus Christ deserves our space to represent him. So we need to show the world as believers that our occupied space demonstrates that he is the light of the world, that he is the salt of the earth. We have to understand and realize and recognize that we have allowed this accumulation of sin to overtake our very being. And we have to understand in order for light to shine, we have to remove some some things. And when you ask God for assistance, he is the greatest renovator of the world. Let his light shine in your life. Allow God to reorganize your life, to reinvent your life, to make you better so you can bring glory to his name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for this opportunity to share this episode entitled Occupied Space. You are the landlord and we are the tenants. So Father God, come in and and we're opening up the door of our hearts so you can come in and see the mess that we've made within our hearts. Help us to clean to clean up our mess. Wash us, cleanse us. Give us a new start, a new lease on life so we can bring glory to your name. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that they will recognize that their space has been overcrowded for years and that you will bring a newness within their hearts within their minds that they will begin to take time to remove those things that are not like you out of their lives that they will separate themselves from those relationships that should not be in their lives father god i pray for those individuals that will surrender their will to yours oh god So now they can begin the process of opening up these things that will be a benefit to them and will bring glory to your name. So we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, that is it for today or tonight, the episode entitled Occupied Space. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that you really did enjoy this episode entitled Occupied Space. And if you are enjoying these episodes, please continue to share these podcasts to your friends, to your family, to your church family, whoever it is. Continue to share these these episodes because I believe it's going to be a blessing to those who hear the message of hope that comes from the throne of God. If there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, fulloflifesd at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. We are so excited for what God is doing. We're almost at the end of this year. So continue to pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to do this. In Jesus' name, God bless.